Hey everybody, happy Sunday and welcome to church here at Open Table. I'm Jason, the pastor here, and welcome to our video worship service. We hope that the next few minutes will bring some goodness and joy and life and peace to you. We know that we live in times where we feel like things are unraveling right now, but this is a moment where we come together, where we celebrate what God is doing in the world and each other and how the Spirit is moving out to bring change and birth life. Today is a special Sunday because today is Pride Sunday where we are celebrating and lifting up the voices of our LGBTQ community. So thanks for being here today. Let us worship the Lord together. Hi, Open Table family. Now let us pray. Holy God, you spoke the world into being. Pour your spirit to the ends of the earth that your children may return from exile as citizens of your commonwealth and our divisions may be healed by your word of love and righteousness. Amen. And hear us as we pray the words that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Open Table family, I am Heather Kilborn, and I am sharing the prayer with you this week. It has been a very hard week, a very heartbreaking week, and I have chosen to pray the words from Bishop Woody White today. Bishop White marched with Martin Luther King, and he wrote this prayer as a benediction in 1996 at the United Methodist General Conference in Denver, Colorado. It is not a prayer for the, for the weak at heart, but it's a prayer that we all pray together boldly. So I invite you to pray with me. And now, may the Lord torment you. May the Lord keep before you the faces of the hungry, the lonely, the rejected, the despised, and the victims of violence. May the Lord afflict you with pain for the hurt, the wounded, the oppressed, the abused, the victims of violence. May God grace you with agony, a burning thirst for justice and righteousness. May the Lord give you courage and strength and compassion 
to make ours a better world, to make your community a better community, to make your church a better church. And may you do your best to make it so. And after you have, you done, after you have done your best, may the Lord grant you peace. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Well, here we are again. It is great to come to you wherever you are. This week we are celebrating Pride Sunday. We are celebrating Pride Month here in June. And this Sunday is our acknowledgement of the goodness and beauty of our LGBTQ brothers and sisters and a celebration of them in the church because we believe that God is working in and among our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ community and they are bringing good to the world around us and God is working through them in so many beautiful ways. And as a church, we always want to be affirming every group of people in the world and highlighting how God is moving and breathing in their lives. For too long, the church has been a force of exclusion. You see, I've just been really on my heart that we live in our society in sort of this tyranny of exclusion. And the church should be a force of kinship, a, of, of a kingdom of God, where our boundaries are overcome, where our divisions are no longer. And as we are in the season of Pentecost, I just love the scripture in Acts that says this. After the Spirit had come and Peter is preaching, he says this. In the last days, God says in Acts 2, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. All people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. You see, in this day, many of the religious leaders said that God's spirit could only be on this group of people or on that group of people. But what Pentecost does in the opening of the Spirit is saying that God now is working through all people everywhere. There are no divisions, no hierarchy in the kingdom of God. No determinations of like the Spirit's going to do there or here or here. The Spirit is on all flesh everywhere. And many believed in Jesus' day that, that people who were servants or women or, or outsiders to the Jewish faith were not included in God's work, that they weren't good enough, that something was wrong and broken with them. That was the case here at Pentecost. When Pentecost and the Spirit comes, God is saying all people are worthy and valuable and good because God is putting the Spirit on all people and that is the mark, the branding of God's goodness, God's grace, God's life. I just love that. In this age, in, our, in this moment in our society, it seems like the church and many in our society are pushing each other away, saying, well, you can't act that way and you can't be this way and you can't have that and you can't do that and God doesn't approve. But Acts says God's Spirit is on all people, everywhere, that all people are created in the image of God and God is love. In, the, in Corinthians it says, love never fails. Love always wins. And so today we celebrate love. We celebrate the beauty and diversity of our community. We celebrate the beauty and diversity of our LGBTQ brothers and sisters and proclaim with a resounding yes, God is working in you and through you. God's image is branded on you and we affirm that and we celebrate that and we are thankful for that and we will follow that as a church. And we believe this is a prophetic task of the church, is to usher in the flourishing of all people. And the only way to help people flourish is to embrace them, empower them, see them as beautiful and good and holy, and stand beside them and say, I'm here. We are kindred spirits and we will do life together. Maybe that's what the world needs right now. It's for the church not to look at who's out, who's left out, but to say, we celebrate you. It is not our job to judge how somebody is carrying their pain, but to be in awe of how they're carrying their pain and saying, we should be looking at the communities around us and saying, wow, uh, we've got something to learn from you. 
You have been through so much, and yet here you are. We shouldn't be bringing each other down. We shouldn't be tearing each other down. We should be lifting each other up and saying, look there, they are amazing. Happy pride, black lives matter. No person is illegal. These should be the chance of the church because they are all about the flourishing of the future of every single person. They are about an, an embrace and inclusion, not an exclusion. And so today we celebrate our brothers and sisters. We also celebrate us as a church being an affirming sp spot. Our church, our world needs more affirming churches. And we stand here today saying we affirm, we believe in, we stand for and with all our gay and lesbian, LGBTQIA brothers and sisters. Thanks for being a part of this church. And we thought today what would be beautiful is not just to hear from me on the impact that an affirming church can make, but for you to hear from some of our beloved open tablers as well on the impact that we are making in people's lives as we seek to be a place of love and a place of inclusion. So here they are. Hey everyone, this is Derek. My partner Eddie and I have been attending Open Table since launch Sunday, January 2018. Since the COVID-19 pandemic has hit, uh, we've all had the realization that there's many things that we do day to day that we have been taken for granted and didn't realize what they were actually blessings. One of those, of course, is attending church regularly on Sunday mornings. But for myself and many of us in the LGBTQ community, uh, that was a realization that we had to encounter when we first came out. When you are faced with not being able to worship where you have normally been and you have the realization that you're not really welcomed at that, that place anymore. And recently when Eddie and I were trying to find a church home, uh, we embraced or encountered some of those same obstacles. That is until we came to Open Table and where we were welcomed and embraced and felt very, very valued to be a part of such a wonderful and loving community. Um, as we all know, Jesus welcomes everybody to the table. And I, for one, am very, very grateful the Open Table saved me a seat. Hello, Open Table family. My name is Shade Gilbert, and I am here today, and I'm just thankful to be a part of the Open Table family. How did I get here? Well, <laughs> my wife and I were laying in bed one Sunday, getting ready to go to brunch, uh, our favorite meal, and I was like, this seems so off for both of us on a Sunday to not have anything to do and then to try to be all the church people to our favorite restaurants to enjoy a meal. <laughs> that was our whole goal. And it was so different for she and I because we were both raised in the church. Um, I've been in church since since I can remember, whether it was a vacation Bible school, Bible study, scripture memorization, um, dance team, a step team, praise and worship team. I've been in all of it since I was a, a child. And so it was very difficult Sunday mornings to wake up and only focus on what I wanted to eat. And I was not being spiritually fed. And so I made a Facebook status and it said, hey guys, you know, Jerlise and I are looking for a church home in the Raleigh, Durham area. We are sinners because we're, we're men, you know, man, woman. Um, and so we're made of flesh and so we sin. I said, but I don't want to go to a church where they think who I love is the sin. There's a lot of things I need to get delivered from. I'm a selfish person, but a sinner as it relates to who I love, I am not. So do not send me to any of those ministries, but feel free to let me know if you know of a affirming ministry. And my friend Autumn commented and said, hey, have you guys checked out Open Table? I think they're near you all, uh, near downtown Raleigh. And we said, okay, you know, we'll check it out. So we went to service and uh, we loved it. It was like, it, it was a great word from Jason that day and it felt like a weight off of us. And so we said, you know, we'd come back. And we came back because consistency is important. Um, we had gone to other churches before, been there for a couple Sundays, and they would say, you know, they're open and affirming, but then they would have a guest preacher who would condemn homosexuality. And so it's like, eh. Are you really open and affirming? So anyway, um, it was important as we came for, I think, a month. So four Sundays back to back. 
And every time Jason's word was so poignant to what was going on, whether it was in our personal lives or at our work or wherever. And um, it was just nail on the head every time. And when we came in, Judson was there. And I think he was playing the organ or the keyboard. And it felt like home. It felt like home. It felt like what we had been missing. And so after, you know, a couple months of attending, we decided to get active and figure out what we needed to do to be able to join the church. And, you know, the story goes on from there. But I just want to speak to the fact that it was so humbling and emotional for us to be able to find a place that wanted to get to know us based on who we were and not who we loved. Make no mistake, I'm black. When you look at me, People see the color of my skin before they know who I'm married to or who I love. It does not matter, right? So it was very important for us to find a church that was inclusive, not only of uh, us being part of LGBTQ community, but also us being black. And I'm just so thankful to be under a leader who stresses the importance of my black life mattering, my gay life mattering, all lives mattering because they all matter in the in the kingdom of Christ. So I just want to say I'm very thankful uh, to be here. It is Pride Month. I do have tons of pride. But one of the things I'm most proud of is being a member of Open Table United Methodist Church. Uh, I know the United Methodist group is going through a lot of turmoil, <laughs> um, but so is America. And I think a revolution is rising and I'm happy to be a part. I'm happy to represent Open Table and I'm happy to tell people who my pastor is and what church I attend in Raleigh because I we are built on a firm foundation and so I just wanted to share what was on my heart today I hope that blesses somebody and if you have you know some friends who want to hear from you know an LGBTQ member about whether this church you know is for them give me a call shoot me a text um, I will gladly talk to people because it has truly changed my life it has changed my wife's life uh, and it's changed the lives of our friends because they see Christ in us, and that's important for that to be taught in the pulpit. Um, I hope you guys are having a great day and a happy Sunday. Uh, God bless all of you. Black Lives Matter. Good morning, Open Table. My name is Josh, and I'm here to talk to you about Pride Month. For me, Pride has never really been about shoving my beliefs in anyone's face. Um, for me, Pride is simply the absence of shame. And for so much of my life, I carried a lot of shame about who I was and how I felt and shame about who I wanted to love. And unfortunately, a lot of that shame came from my time growing up in the church. Uh, the messages I heard as a kid about LGBT people and how they were disgusting and evil and sinful and would never uh, get into heaven, you couldn't serve Jesus, um, just really gave me a lot of shame about who I was and really made me hate myself. Um, I got to a point in my life, though, where I knew that I was who God created me to be and that I needed to embrace that and live my life the way that he made me. Um, I also knew that my faith was extremely important to me, and I was so thankful to Jesus for what he had done in my life and the ways that he's blessed me and everything that he's done for me, and I didn't want to just walk away from him. So I really needed to try to reconcile my faith with my sexuality and was able to do that through reading and research and praying. But I was, I was so afraid that I wouldn't be able to find a church that kind of nurtured that growth and had that same belief system. Um, so when Mitch and I found Open Table, it was such a godsend to have an affirming church that made us feel welcome and appreciated and valued and let us be who we are and serve in the church and prove that we have a place in the church community. Um, unfortunately, a lot of LGBT people are in my situation where their families don't understand and don't accept them. Um, I'm hoping and praying that that's going to change. Um, but if not, then one of the great things about being LGBT is that we get to choose our family. And Mitch and I have chosen Open Table as our family. Uh, we have relationships there with other LGBT members and other people in the church that are very near and dear to us. And you guys really are our family. So I thank you so much for the way that you have welcomed Mitch and myself and everyone else in our community. And just love us and let us serve and be those members of the body of Christ that we really are. I uh, hope to see you soon. There's 
nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone in your presence Lord so we say Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood the place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my heart's shame is undone your presence Lord so we say Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the Thanks again for joining us for another service here at Open Table. I hope that today brought you a sense of blessing, a peace, and grace. I, 
be in prayer for our brothers and sisters, both in the LGBTQ community and in the black community. There is a lot of suffering in our world, and let us be people who see that suffering, who hear that suffering, and don't put our needs and our views of the world above their needs, but to say simply, how can I come alongside of you and help you in your struggle? Maybe that should be our prayer this week. Special announcement here. Next week, we are going to be beginning the process of coming together. This is going to look um, a bit different than church was, but we're going to be in this season for a little while. Next week, we are going to be having church on the green, uh, on the green space outside next to the church. So come on. Um, if you feel comfortable, we realize that not everyone will feel comfortable, and that's okay. We get it, and there's no judgment here. So if we will continue the videos here next week. So you'll have the videos ongoing if you don't feel comfortable being here. But also if you do, show up at 10 o'clock next Sunday over on the green space. Bring a chair if you want. Bring a snack if you want. Um, it'll just be a really casual time with some music, some worship, and some preaching from me, and also communion. So I hope that maybe you can join us next week. But if not next week, maybe in the weeks to follow. We look forward to seeing you and thank you so much for your continued support, your continued financial support of the church and your continued prayers. So as you go, may you be people of inclusion. May you be people who celebrate the spirit working in other people that are different from you. And may you be people who come alongside those who may have different experiences in you and say, I'm here as your brother and your sister. Let's walk hand in hand together. May you go and be the people of Christ in the world.